I'm sorry for everything I said about many rigs. I didn't mean any of it. I really didn't. You're perfect just as you are, little 1.0 rig. Look at those cute little 1.0 tires on there. Oh, uh, you need a cone? You need a cone? Yes, it needs a cone. Look at that little guy with a cone in his mouth. Get the little one pun on time. <laughs> He'll grow into a full rig one day. Yes, he will. Oh, yes, he will. Look at the little tires on this guy. Oh, just look at the little tires. You just want to squeeze them. I just want to squeeze the little tires and eat them up. Just eat them up on the rocks. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I didn't like that one. Oh, you gotta, you gotta be quiet around these little rigs. You scare them. They gotta get their rest. If you're like me, you may have resisted such cute little mini rigs all your life. Maybe you didn't like how they handled. Maybe you didn't like how they turned over just as quick as they possibly could because they're so tiny. They got just the teeniest little momentum to them. They just flip over so fast. I've never really liked them, but, you know, this Element RC Enduro 24 just might have changed my mind. Just look at the cute little guy. Wake up, little guy. Wake up. We need to, we need to do a little test ride with you. Come on now, little review. I think he'll wake up for a review just in a minute. Today, we are reviewing the Element Enduro 24. A new release from Element RC that I am just in love with. All right, that's enough of that. Let's unwrap this guy. Oh wait, I should do an unboxing first. It's serious time now. We have this brand new rig from Element RC, the Enduro 24, and as maybe you can tell, I'm a little excited about it. Although I've never liked mini rigs, 18th scale and smaller because of their handling characteristics and really the lack of aftermarket parts. This one's kind of changing my mind, honestly. So we're going to do an unboxing and review on this Enduro 24. I'm John Holmes with Holmes Hobbies. Thanks for tuning in. So let's just take a look at the packaging. Nice and small for a nice and small rig, as you can probably hear. I've already taken it apart just to look at it and see what's inside before I get myself into a review and work myself into a corner. But it's your standard issue box, you know, it's got pictures on the side, it's going to look good on your shelf at the hobby shop. It's got all the specs on the back pretty much. Uh, I didn't have anything to measure with, but I am going to assume that it's got about one inch wheels on there. So we would call this a 1.0 rig. We got 1.9s, we got 1.55s, we got 2.2s, and now we have 1.0s. So uh, just looking at the specs on the back, it's got stuff. Uh, final drive ratio 62.6 to 1. Amazing. Yes, that is what we need. Lots of gear reduction. You can use a fast motor, you can use a slow motor, you can use whatever. It doesn't really matter, but lots of ratio is what a crawler needs. It's got a four link on there. It's got suspension on there. It's got a chassis mounted servo on there. It has wheels and tires even. Wow. Seven millimeter wheel hexes and a bunch of other stuff that honestly really doesn't matter. So what we're going to do is open this little baby. I mean this big boy up and we're going to check her out. So I must say I do really dig the body design on this. It's not just another off the shelf offering and that's one thing that's always been my gripe about the small scale rigs is it's the same rigs rehashed over and over and over again by multiple companies and nothing new on the market and this has got some pretty cool features to it honestly so just a little insert oh, it was zip tied down in there we've got our radio we have our instructions with charger and the radio is a two-piece just like that rock hobby that i recently did a review on so here we go it's you know it kind of slams together like that but we got to put batteries in it first hopefully there's a diagram yes there is four double a batteries and this comes with a little single cell lipo rig uh our battery with the rig so you don't have to supply your own battery oh it's triple a's oh no we Two more. Oh, oh, ah, oh. So you need four AAA batteries for this. If I read the box, I probably would have known that, but I was just skimming. So 
So you insert your batteries, then you put your controller together with force. There we go. As always, we turn on the radio first. Then we turn on the rig. But before we get to that, the charger supplied and, you know, instruction booklet. We ain't gonna read that. So the charger is actually a USB charger and it's a single cell LiPo. So it would make sense that they could just use a five volt rail and it outputs 4.2 volts DC as it should with a 200 milliamp hour constant current. Sweet, light on is charging, light off, it's done. So there we go. I've already charged this up for the sake of the video. So before we turn it on, oh yeah, and look, they, they uh, included in the instruction booklet that I threw somewhere, ha, they include extra body posts in case you want to do a larger size body, something that's like a SUV style. They've got these two longer body posts that are included in there. So that's pretty cool. I like that. Thinking ahead. They're thinking ahead. Oh, and in typical Element RC style, they actually have a scale garage inside. And uh, I don't know how to take this box apart without ripping it to shreds on camera. So we'll just, uh, you know, take a look in there. It's a full garage. That's pretty neat. I like that. That'll be fun. And turn this guy on. So essentially the battery goes in the back. I'll take off the body first. Let's check her out before I get ahead of myself and start wheeling this big boy. Such a big boy. One day you'll be full size rig. It has a forward mounted motor. That's pretty rad with an chassis mounted servo. The little transfer case up front. They got their uh, you know transfer shaft there with a center mounted transmission. Doing it this way is actually going to let you run a whole lot of bodies instead of having your, your center mounted deal there. This is going to allow you to run, man, a lot of these like diecast 24th scale stuff. I, ooh, I have a Tacoma body at home that I've never used because I could never get it to fit over the center transmissions. I'm going to have to bring that and see if I can fit it. Then we have our all integrated ESC RX as it says on there whoop to do and then our plug with a little bitty battery that comes with it 520 milliamp hour battery so people run 520s on full-size comp rigs uh full-size 1.9 comp rigs and 2.2 comp rigs and although it's double the voltage or triple the voltage so it will have triple the watt hours this is going to give us a lot of runtime i am just guessing a whole bunch of runtime another thing to note is that let's see eh, we got a good bit of bump steer on here it's 24th scale, so I'm going to give them a pass. Um, it is a four link with a chassis mounted servo. So unless you did a three link setup with, you know, like a pan hard, there's no way to get rid of the bump steer, but yeah, you know, this thing is so tiny. There's probably not really enough room to do that properly. So we'll give them, we'll give them a pass. We'll give them a pass on that. This isn't really going to be all performance, but uh, just under the weight of the vehicle, it actually fully articulates. And that's one problem that I've seen with a lot of these little mini rigs is that they just have too hard of a suspension. So the suspension doesn't work simply tires feel nice and soft. You can, you can hear the lugs gripping my, my finger in general looks well done. It could certainly use some modifications. If you want to like max performance, all this weight on the back is going to hurt your ability to climb, uh, you know, a side hilling, it's going to be decent. We could add some weight down low. I'm already talking about modding this guy. I have never wanted to modify a 24th scale rig. This has me excited though. All right, uh, so it's set in LiPo. It's got nickel metal hydride and LiPo little whoop de doos on there. The on off switch is waterproof, it looks like, or at least, you know, shielded. And maybe it's waterproof. Probably says on the box whether it is or not. I'm not getting it in water. I suggest that you do not get your rigs in water. So take it for that. I'm not going to even test that out. And is it on? Oh, look at that. Look at that. Ooh, the steering servo is pretty snappy for such a little guy. Uh, and you can see the body roll back and forth. Well, with the body off, maybe you can't see the body roll. Uh, but the, the suspension definitely kind of leans back and forth as it operates. And that's because it's got the four link on front with the chassis mounted servo. 
again, I'm going to give them a pass on doing that because this rig is so tiny and so cute. Yeah, just put these teeny little, the smallest body clips in the world back on. And let's just check out this, uh, this, this body roll. See if you can check out this body roll on camera. See if like, oh yeah, look at that. Look at it rolling back and forth. She's dancing. She's dancing. So this servo is not only snappy, but obviously it actually has decent power. I'm surprised at uh, the torque that it's putting out. Yeah, look at that, look at that roll. I'm going to the club. Oh, sorry, Element, you're not old enough. All right, so I think it is time to go take this for a test on our big old rock pile. All right, meeting you out here at the rock pile that uh, is so big. We're just gonna see how she does. What's our what's our low speed control? What's our minimum speed? Oh, and the lights the lights kick on when you give it throttle. Does is there brake lights? There's no brake lights, but the lights kick on when you give it throttle. Do the lights get brighter? <laughs> the lights get brighter with more throttle, so it's just hooked up to the motor output. That's kind of funny. Do what you gotta do. It'll get it done. So we get a little noise. She's a little noisy. It's actually got a pulse to it. Oh, I hit a gate already. You're grounded, Element. Yeah. So it unloads a little bit. Thanks to the excellent gear down though, it could be worse. This is actually not bad for the minis that I have driven and that I never liked. This is not bad. So let's see. Let's just see how she does. How's our how's our traction on this powdery limestone? Let me know in the comments if you have picked one of these up. And what mods you've done to it so far. Our uh, reverse is a little touchy. To be expected, I suppose. Usually is. Uh, let's see how our side hilling is. There's a hole back here. You can't see it. Oh no! We killed the baby. Another gate. All right. So I'm going to have to uh, hand of God this course a little bit. It needs it needs a little help back here. There we go. That should do it. Try again. Let's go through our course. Yeah. You know, uh, driving mini rigs is really tricky because they're so quick and nimble. You really don't get any reaction time. When they're going to roll over, they just flop right over it, it's uh, very difficult it's also it's difficult to tune them it's really difficult to engineer them as well hats off to element for at least doing a an original design and putting their neck out there you know they really stick their neck out to do an original design like this and Whoa. <laughs> all right so maybe this rock's just a, a, a bit tall for the element. We'll put it here at the end. We'll try again. One more time. So it'll take a little bit of getting used to. There's an interesting pulse to this guy. So we, we've got our, our normal noise you can hear. Like a heartbeat on top. That's That's interesting. I wonder what that's about. Oh yeah, we might as well see what our, our max speed is too. Is there enough room? That's our max speed. <laughs> That's enough for a mini micro, whichever size this is. So the motors, it's maybe a touch weak, which keeps you from breaking parts. It's a smart move to have a pretty weak motor with a, a stock rig. But it's also a really tiny motor, one of the tiniest motors out there, uh, 180 size, I think. Maybe it's a 130, but it looked kind of a long can. A long can 100, it's such a weird motor. Just so tiny, I'm not used to ultra tiny motors. Look at there, oh, we finally made it through our course. 
Yeah, once you get it bound down, it actually doesn't respond. The motor just completely binds down. So, in my professional opinion of being an absolute electronic snob, while it could be better, it's also not bad. This is one of the better crawling, one of the best crawling micros that I have ever wheeled. So, hats off to Element for that. I'm just gonna keep wheeling. And while we're doing that, let me know if you would be interested in something like this. Is it really hard in, in wintertime where you are? Would you be interested in this for an indoor crawler? Would you want to take it outdoors? Oh yeah, we got her bound down. The tires are grippy. What we need is a little wheel speed bump though. Or maybe you have a child that something like this would be proper for. I don't know, I, I really think that children could wheel the full size, 1.9s, full size, <laughs> TRX4s, the sport in particular, and not be worried about breaking it. And with something this small, as long as it has a weak enough motor, I don't want to use the word weak, but it's, it's what it is. It's not going to break itself either. And that's always the, the rub of an RTRs. You don't want the RTR to be so powerful and capable that it breaks itself in the hands of a user that may not be good at driving. But at the same time, it still needs to do its job. There we go. We got through. Just a little bit of wheel speed. It could probably use a little bit more wheel speed in my opinion. Just a teeny bit more. It could use more torque in my opinion. Just a teeny bit more. And then of course it'll, it'll be the chasing of drivetrain breakages. Look at that. Just look at it. Crawling through those little bitty old rocks. Well, this will be fun indoors. On those days when it's 100 degrees and 110% humidity outside like it sometimes is in Missouri. Does this thing have drag brake? I'm not sure. Let's, let's test it on the table. It appears to have drag brake. And if it doesn't have drag brake, then this is simply the drag of the internal gear down combined with the drag of the motor, which is evidently enough. I mean, you can see those tires aren't even moving until I like press it down and get traction. So this guy is gonna... <laughs> oh, I feel like a kid pushing a little car around. Yeah, yeah, oh, it's fun. All right, so I'm really not sure what else I could do on a review for something this tiny. I can't test it out my normal course, so I don't have any frame of reference of, you know, really how capable it should be or might be. But I can tell you, I mean, just for going outside and grabbing a couple of rocks, I can have a lot of fun with this. And I'm sure the battery is going to last a ridiculously long time because it's such a small rig. It's probably not pulling more than an amp in a stall anyways. And if it's pulling an amp in a stall, then you could stall it out for about 30 minutes and this battery would last. Yeah. <laughs> it's so tiny. It's so cute. <laughs> All right. Well, I will just continue playing with this and playing with this until I either break something or run out of batteries. So I do believe that will be all for today. If you do have any questions about this teeny tiny little rig that I did not get to, let me know in the comments. And otherwise, I thank you for tuning in. Have a good day.